So today I stand before you as a sexual health specialist. Now I didn't exactly take the traditional path to get me to where I am today. In fact, I have a story to tell you how I got to where I am today. And it starts with this picture taken of my best friend and I in December of 2000, when she gave me a great Christmas present. It was called the Girlfriend's Keepsake Book. She took several months and she wrote all kinds of different memories and took a little memorabilia of all the things that we had lived throughout all of our teenage years that started with us meeting actually when we were 14 at high school. We had a friend, she caught the story in the book about how a girl at school thought that we looked similar and we bumped into each other and met in the school bathroom and I asked her to go to this guy Charlie's party and there was an exclamation mark there because at the time it was such a big to-do because this guy was in the top five hotties of our school, and so if you were selected by him to go to a party, you felt like a chosen one. So when I bumped into her in the bathroom, it clicked, and that very evening we went to this party, and I was lucky not only did I meet my one best friend that night, but I also met my other best friend. And from that moment on, we really were the three musketeers. Where there was two, the third one was never far behind, and we were careless. I say it like that because we weren't worried about the bigger things in life, like our health. We were just living our life, doing our thing, and for the most part, like a lot of teenagers. And we lived our rites of passage together. You know, those things that we live in our childhood years, our teen years, our adult years. And when we look back, there's things that stand out. Well, for us, it was really probably thousands of hours of talking on the phone, lots of great partying, shopping, getting our first tattoos on our ankles together starting school every year. We lived through love. We lived through life. We lived through having four children between the two of us. And I actually had the honor of being in her wedding. And I never forget that day, and having that time during the ceremony, sitting in the front pew of the church and having that time to think about all the things that we had lived over all the years of our friendship and growing up. And to see that we had come out on the other end and our friendship had lasted the test of time and that I was getting to see her cross over into her adult life and meet her partner and to this day it's definitely one of my fondest memories with my best friend and I say this evening was the night the story starts is because you know that's the night she gave me this girlfriend's keepsake book but it was also the type of picture where I say if I knew then what I knew now uh, this is where things really took a turn and we got smacked in the face with something called HPV actually uh, right after that picture was taken. In fact, you know, this very evening, I caught it on camera. We were hanging out like we did many a night and the kids got tired so we put them to bed and we were just watching TV together and she went to the washroom and the next thing you know she's yelling for me to go to the washroom and she's standing there in a puddle of blood. Obviously, this was really concerning, so she heads to the hospital, and a doctor comes in to see her, and they end up doing a biopsy, the results come back, and he explains to her that she has HPV, which is something none of us back in 2000 had ever heard of. So he then explained to her that he needed to do a procedure to take care of it. So a week later, he went in, he cleaned out all this HPV, this precancer, and stapled her up and then she did radiation and came out six months later stronger and happy that they got it all and she was feeling better and um, then all of a sudden she started being really tired and having a sore back and not feeling great so she decided to go get a checkup with her oncologist and then at that appointment actually he explained to her that that HPV that they went in and took care of Unfortunately, it had turned into cervical cancer, actually. And that not only had it turned into cervical cancer, it had spread throughout all of her lymph nodes. And then at the age of 23, sitting in that appointment, uh, she was told that she had approximately six to nine months to live. Well, unfortunately, um, that's not exactly how things went. In fact, she did an incredibly quick downward swirl 
And from the day that she got this news to the day that she passed away, it was an incredibly short seven weeks. In fact, she passed away on my son's first birthday, May 2001. And now I'm left with this book, this very precious book that I look at from time to time. But there's actually a, a catch to my story. Back when she was told about this HPV for the first time and she had time to get ready for this procedure, she went home and Googled HPV. And when she found out all this information online, she called me up and she was so pissed to find out that she had something that no one had ever told her about. She had a family doctor, a full education, a couple of kids, but yet I'd never heard of this. Well, so she was so angry, she pulled out a pen and paper and wrote to Oprah, Dear Oprah, I want to get on your show and I want to be teaching people everywhere about this. So nobody else goes down this same path that I've gone down. Well, unfortunately, she only got a couple of paragraphs into that letter. And uh, she got quick so fast, she never even had the time to finish. So no, this letter never got sent. It just got stashed away. Um, but it definitely made it that, you know, uh, it's interesting how things will have turned now because of that story about how we need to be spreading awareness. I mean, there's me and my other best friend leaning on each other after she passed. And that grieving process really led us to feel overwhelmed and needing to do something about HPV. So we started off the year after by doing a run to raise awareness about HPV. And then that led into a second run the following year. And then about five years down the road, I was driving, actually. And it dawned on me in that moment. And I pulled out a bill and flipped it over and took out a lipstick crayon. And I wrote this message on, on the back of the bill that I needed to use my voice because people need to know about what HPV does to a life. And it was my calling to do something. And this stumbled into a year later, the creation of HPV Global Action, which is Canada's trusted source for information about everything and anything to do with HPV. We're the registered charity for Canada. And uh, it's led us to have education and communication methods that we are spreading throughout the globe, helping all countries um, with this preventable and important virus that we need to be talking much more about. And I like to do a disclaimer when I talk about HPV because it really is information for everybody. It doesn't matter what your religion is, your gender, or your sexual orientation, or your age even. You might be saying to yourself, hmm, I don't really think that this has anything to do with me. But you definitely have people in your lives for whom this does apply. And that's why everybody needs to know more about HPV. So what is HPV? Well... It's the human papillomavirus, and it actually has 180 different strains, and they're numbered HPV 1, 2, 3, and so on, and some of them can lead to problems. Now, unfortunately, there's no signs and symptoms typically for this virus, and it's spread via sexual activity. Well, that word sexual activity is a really interesting word. I think we need to break that down, so let's be clear. What is being sexually active? Well, it's actually the minute that you go blow the belt. And I bring my friends, Sally and Joe, everywhere I go with their red belts to be really clear about what this really means. So everything that we do below this waistline and above our knees, front to back, everything we do with our hands, everything we do with our mouths, everything and anything we do below that waistline is when we're sexually active. And if we take a real look at what this definition is, this actually includes using our mouth and our hands and our fingers to pleasure someone below the belt. It also includes putting a penis or an object into a vagina or a butt. And surprisingly for some to learn, rubbing up against each other with skin-to-skin -skin contact below the belt is also being sexually active. So a little fact is that over 75% of the population will come into contact with one form or another of HPV in their lifetime. And what that means in a room full of people is, is that three out of four will have had an HPV at some point in their life. And that's shocking. How is this possible? Why? Well, that's because it only takes one infected partner one time. You do not need to have a long list of sexual partners to be 
considering whether this could be something that's happened to you. In fact, unfortunately, as much as condoms are a really important protection against unwanted pregnancies and a long list of sexually transmitted infections, even condoms don't completely protect us against HPV because a condom only shields the genital area and there's other parts that have a skin-to-skin -skin contact. So no, we are not completely protected from HPV even with a condom. So there's Sally and Joe from behind and they're wearing knapsacks. And I use this analogy because these represent our sexuality actually. And our sexuality is actually something that like we carry around with us and it just follows us through life and it's not something that we see but in this you know let's think you know these two people they get together they get jiggy with it pick your activity of choice to do something sexual below the waistline and what's going to happen to sally and joe well actually they're going to be getting whatever the other one has in their knapsacks and we could look at these knapsacks actually all day long i don't know what's in them there may be things in there that are going to go away on their own. There may be things in there that need treatment. There may be things in there that could actually lead to something worse, like a disease or a cancer. But like I said earlier, there's no signs and symptoms typically to HPV, so it's really difficult to know. But not only that, we're not only collecting what the person that we've just been with has, we're collecting what they've caught from the person that they have before them and the person that they've had before them. So by being with one person, it's limitless how many things we could have come into contact with. So what happens after we get an HPV? Well, any of these things can happen. You could get an HPV that goes away on its own. You could get genital warts, or if it's left untreated, HPV can also lead to a cancer. And clearly there's no point in talking about HPVs that go away on their own. So talking about genital warts, they come from HPV and you get them by any skin sexual contact, even without penetration. Let's be clear, this means you don't need to stick your equipment into any hole. Just by skin-to-skin -skin contact below the waistline and above the knees, front to back, we're coming into contact with the possibility of this. And also, if you have this type, it could take many months or even years before these warts will appear. So you could be with somebody now and it not present symptoms for many, many years to come. And also, you can still give HPV without actually having this physical symptom and signs of genital warts. So what that would look like is that you have that HPV, you give it to every single person that you go below the waistline with, but you don't actually get that physical symptom yourself. So, shocking, yes. These are the cancers that are caused by HPV. We have tonsil and vocal cord cancer, tongue cancer, throat cancer, anal cancer, cervical cancer, vulvar cancer, vaginal cancer, penile cancer. You might be asking yourself, how are we seeing oropharyngeal cancers above the shoulders? How is this possible? Well, ask ourselves the question, how many of us are actually protecting our mouths when we're performing oral sex on a partner? Not very many of us. So we're actually contracting the HPV through our mouths. And unfortunately, the most devastating part of this information is that any of these cancers could stay asleep in a person's body for up to 40 years before they will present symptoms that they have a problem. So if specifically, we can screen for cervical cancer. So if we have a cervix, it's really important to be getting our regular screening because half of the diagnoses of people with a cervix that are diagnosed with cervical cancer are under the age of 50. And I think the most powerful and important statement we can say about cervical cancer today is that it's one of the most preventable cancers that exists right now in the 21st century, which means we don't need to have women and people with cervixes continue to die from cervical cancer. It should be something from the past. Now, getting vaccinated against HPV is probably the most important takeaway for me to send to everyone here listening today. HPV vaccination is safe and effective, and it's the best proven protection from this virus. That's just the bottom line. There's been over 300 million doses of HPV vaccine given around the globe. And everyone from the ages of nine and up benefit from getting vaccinated, regardless of your age, gender, sexuality, or your relationship status. And my last important point about getting vaccinated is that because there's no screening for people with a penis, getting vaccinated against HPV is the only protection. My takeaways for today are really 
looking into getting vaccinated, no matter your age, gender, and relationship status, if you have a cervix, get screened and talk to your loved ones about getting the HPV vaccine and getting screened. You know, um, I hope for future generations that you will be guided um, by the impulse of love to take action and prevent this tragedy from happening to your loved ones. I so wish that my friend had been the last person taken from HPV. And in turn, I think I'm grateful that I've turned into a visible force to fight this invisible force of HPV.